Hi folks and welcome to the critique channel for all those participating in the Howard Jones online art tutorials. Hi folks, first of all we're um, starting off with Bob's work. This is a fine job. Um, a little bit of sort of maybe a little too dry the paint in, in the sky. Um, a lot more water uh, when applying the sky shapes would be um, would be beneficial. Texture in our areas of stone and brickwork is excellent, Bob. Um, I like the way you've just sort of implied the amount of uh, a, a, of stone face and and sort of hard surfaces down here. I can see here that um, you know we were using acrylic on this occasion on the day, um, and it's on paper. So you know we've made best use, I think, of um, the acrylic medium in uh, a sort of watercolor type application. So um, yeah, just be a little bit careful, Bob, um, of uh, some edges. It's still a little bit hard in some places but overall that's great i mean i do like the the strong leading which is what we were you know which was one of the main um um goals on the day so we've got a nice powerful sort of lead into our sort of feature area which is about here you know the the focal point is made by the fact that it's it's the only this area here is the only thing offering a vertical in in this scene so it it sort of by that fact automatically becomes the focal point because it's it's different to everything else that's in that scene um so i think you've achieved that um well bob it's good. Okay, moving on here. This is very different again. This is very textural. Uh, this is from Denise. Let's just grab a drawing implement here. This this is fine. Uh, you know the 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 strong movement or the strong directional. Um, line through here. Everything points to our our building here. Um, I would say that if when you squint your eyes and look at this, I mean, I'm just pointing out that's that's a lovely. That's a, that's a very powerful um, use of line and direction. But um, the only thing that slight concern I have is um, when you look at the overall. Um, application of paint it's very samey it, it, it's it's the, the tones and the textures are very close throughout um, it I think what what we need in this is um, an area perhaps where we go a little bit darker just grab something a little bit darker here we go a little bit darker in certain areas particularly in the foreground it's it, it's beautifully textured. We have a physical texture. What we need is more of an optical texture. And in other words, you know, the physical texture being the um, the impasto effect of gel medium or whatever it was that you've used here, Denise. Um, it's been used to really good effect. Um, but what we need on top of that is for the paint to create some darker areas, particular particularly here, as I say, around around this area. If you look at it with those marks there, you'll see just how much the difference that makes with something around this, this arch that was in here. Just be a little bit little, be a little bit careful with your scale. Um, I, th I think comparatively the, the little arch to the side here was closer to this sort of size by, by, by comparison. Um, uh, you know it's a little bit smaller. I think that's your your arch area there. So yeah, just, just bear that in mind. It's, it's beautifully textured. But um, when you squint your eyes, there's not a huge 
amount of tonal impact. And the other thing that very busy texture will do is it actually has the opposite effect of texture if you use too much of it, and it sort of softens everything um, by everything being of the same textural um, feel, it actually has a, an effect of losing edges rather than creating them. So you, you need to um, decide, well, let me just show you what I mean here. If you, um, let me just get rid of my scribblings. If you, um, inst instead of texturing everything, um, I, I would say, well, this is, this area here is going to be where I am going to um, put the you know the the bulk the, the the lion's share of the of the texture and not only texture but as I say darker areas of paint and you probably need to put a little bit up here just to make sure that we don't miss the focal point area so if you think of that scene as it is keep it as it is but um, yeah, make more of, you know, knockouts, make some of these area here, areas here, particularly in the background. I think there's an area there in the sky. We could probably do without that texture, um, unless that was in, originally intended to go under the arch, which would have been bigger. So um, you've got to be careful that you don't go into the background with texture. OK, you want to sort of try and keep the background less textured, unless it's about the sky, unless it's about the background. But in this case, it was very much about the sort of foreground and, and the um, and the old ruin here. OK, it's good, though. I mean, it's, you know, I love the texture. And I, I, I do love the texture. It's, it's just slightly overdone. OK, moving on. Uh, next up, I think we've got Diane. Okay, let's grab a pencil here. <clears throat> I think, Diane, in your defence here, this photograph is a little out of focus. Um, GSB, it might, if you can, when you're taking photos, it might be worth. Um, buying yourself at one of these cheap little camera tripods because I, I, I suffer the same if I'm taking photos by hand I'm holding it out there and um, some of these modern cameras I know have um, sort of um, compensatory um, movement um, uh, f uh, functions um, which do work and don't work sometimes I find so yeah the photo is slightly out of focus which is a shame because I think you've got a really good painting here. Um, you, we, we've outlined this a little bit harsh. You know, there, there's a strong unbroken line right the way through here. It does break there, it does break about there, which is quite nice. And it turns there. It'd be nice if more of that um, outside area, whoops, just put some of that back so I can show you what I mean. Um, it'd be nice if. A little more of that was broken in areas. So if I'll just take another colour and I'll show you what I mean here. Imagine if some of that was broken around these places at the top there. So if you break that up a little bit more, that would be better. Um, yeah, and and again, you've, you've you've we've got to start thinking about breaking down the strength and texture of the line. Um, and I, I know there's a lot of dry brush in here, which is something that I advocate a lot. You know, the, the, the dry brush is a technique that often I don't see enough of. The trouble is when we get to grips with it often, um, once we've found it as a new technique, we tend to over apply it then, like we do with most, most things. We suddenly discover, you know, the importance of tonal value. And then all of a sudden our next few paintings will be possibly over uh, overcompensated. We, we go the other way for a while. So, um, so just be a little bit careful of very hard edges to things as a result of too much dry brush work. I, I would say, if, sorry, just to sort of um, explain a little bit further, just get rid of most of that a second. Um, I, I would say that you know we should we, we should really be thinking about um, reserving most of the dry brush work for foreground areas. In other words. Trying to keep this pencil, it doesn't want to stay. Uh, and in other words, areas here, which is foreground, definitely keep your your you know a lot of dry brush work around here. 
um, and, and a little bit around here, as we mentioned earlier. But for everywhere else, I, I wouldn't have too many hard edges in, in the skies. In the sky, sorry. A little bit, yes, but um, you can overdo it. And, and, and the areas here, I, I wouldn't um, necessarily be relying on quite so much drier paint. I, I would I would use I would uh, um, rely more on some more on some um, soft wet in wet areas. So even round here, just a little bit too too hard of edge. Um, yeah. It's good. It's, it's, it's beautifully designed. I, I love the powerful, you know, the, 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 the directional stuff in here. Look at that. That's, that's fantastic. And I do sort of get, you know, the reason why sometimes we apply hard edges to things. It's to make sure that those, th those areas do stand out. But um, as I say, it's all, it's, it's all about balance. How much here, how much there, you know, softening it off in some places while leaving it hard in others. But as a rule of thumb, I always think that the foreground and focal point are really the only areas where you need to be uh, concerning yourself with um, the uh, hard dry brush technique. Okay. Good. And on next to Gwen. Now this this has got a, almost like a print-like um, quality to it. I really like this Gwen. Um, yeah, you know, I, I I could say the same thing. I suppose with in terms of just how much hard edge we leave in places. Um, there's some softening off down here in the lower part of the sky, just around here. Which is quite nice but you probably needed as you pushed out as these clouds come further away from the um, from the focal point which is here of course that's our focal point as you move out from there things should naturally soften in us almost like a vignette style but you have done here and it's 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 it is it's, the balance is not a million miles out not bad at all Um, I don't know how you've achieved this texture here, Gwen, but it's absolutely lovely. I'm talking about this sort of area here. Um, that's a really, really nice texture. And it's in the right place. That's what I mean. It's in the right place. Just about here is where you'd expect to find your texture. But you've got to be careful in the ruin itself. I think you've slightly over-textured uh, the inside of the shape. It would have been nice also to have seen a window, um, had we have seen, yeah, had we have seen a window in this, in this that we could, would, that would break up that shape. That shape really needed, um, the, the, this structure, the, the ruin, actually needed breaking up a little bit by, by the couple of windows that was on offer from the in the photograph. So. Um, it, that would make quite a difference, but you know the subtlety of the colour, the, the the subdued, almost sort of neutral colours in here, are lovely. I do like that. I do like that. Nice, nice work, uh, Gwen. Good. Okay. Uh, next up, we have Judith. Very different again. You know, this this has a real, this has sort of character and a bit of personality about it. It's 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 probably slightly heavy here. You know, just just around here, there's some big jumps. Um, whereas, but but, they, but I really like the ruin itself. That's beautifully done. There's there's so look at that. Outline that that's a really interesting outline. What I'm talking about is you need to soften it. If you take a damp brush or even a damp finger, and you can just a um, little bit of water on the finger, you could just soften the edge. We've jumped suddenly from this almost you know, if we're looking at the tonal scale, 
that's something near 9 or 10, isn't it? You know, that's really dark. And this tonal scale in the wall here is closer to 2, maximum 3. So it's moving much towards the lighter end. Now, we have a transition area that we, or we should have a transition area here. Let's give it a different colour so you can see what I mean. We have a transition area here, right between the dark and the light. That should be much softer in areas. It works in here, strange enough, because we, we assume that there's a corner and there's a turn of angle here. But we must, um, I, I mean, you know, going on the photo, we could see really that this was a flat. This area here was flat. And, um, and therefore we'd expect a much softer transition. So some mid-tones just at this broken, or even just broken up a little bit more. I think this dark is just simply too heavy, this, this dark area in here. Um, that's just too heavy, it's too dark. So a softer transition here. Um, you probably just need a bit of warmth in the wall here, and a little bit of scaling out, so the wall would come out much wider, tapering off towards the front end up here. And and the angle probably a bit shallow off the top of this wall. So this wall would be round, round here, somewhere like that, instead of what it is at the moment. If you, if you can see, the, we, we've got a, a bit of a strange perspective because it's the walls doing that. And if it were to continue, if you can imagine if, with this perspective, if this wall was to continue going on, it would be up in the sky somewhere. Um, Whereas it needs to be coming across in front of us because it's, it's now obviously in, it's going to be a strange structure if it went up in the sky. It needs to if it did carry on along the ground, it would go towards this this structure on the ground over here. So just be a little bit careful with that, Jude. But um, love the colours too. It just needs warming up. I think you know with this gorgeous greeny turquoise over here on the left, if you'd have increased this. What looks like the burnt sienna here that I'm circling with my um, cursor. If you had increased this warmer colour into this wall that came up here um, and, and softened that area there, you, you've got a very good painting. Okay, thanks, Jude. Um, we're now moving on to Ron. This is good. This is good. This is this is excellent perspective too. Love the way. Love the way the perspective. Um, it works beautifully well. You can see all the individual planes and and, ver and sorry horizontal surfaces moving into the scene here. Look at that. That's 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 great. Lovely. Perfect perspective. I think we can see this horizontal and the wall here as it goes a little bit further in. And if you now, as I've highlighted those horizontal surfaces, if you run a line through them all now, you can see exactly what I mean. The perspective is spot on. If you use a different color and you'll see what I mean. There's, there's that line. Another sort of shorter line there because that's a separate wall bit. And, and the same goes for this nearer wall here. We run a line through these, these horizontal surfaces and you've got really good perspective there. Um, which takes us in, of course, to the, to the ruin. Um, maybe a little bit heavier around the edge of the ruin with the dark. Uh, a smaller amount of that texture, a, a, a more scant uh, application around this edge rather than making it any lighter because it's not... I don't think it's too dark per se, this area here. It probably needs to be a little more scant, a, a little more miss than hit, if you know what I mean. But I'm, I'm nitpicking a bit because it looks excellent. I'd expect to see, um, I'd expect to see the sky through there, just through the top of the arch a little bit there. Um, it's lovely. I, I really like it. I, I love the, you know, there's busyness here. There's busyness here, but it's not small brush busyness. That's the difference. Um, it's all large brush busyness. That's a very good, very good painting. Yeah. Yeah. I like that, Ron. Good work. Good work. Okay, 
and we move on to Sarah's. I like the light in this. Yeah, there's, there's good perspective here again. Look at that, it runs in beautifully. All the heights, the height of this wall in the foreground is spot on. It doesn't, doesn't go awkwardly uphill or downhill. It's just about right there through there. And the same goes for this wall over here. That, that perspective is pretty spot on. Little lift up there, but it flattens out beautifully. Another little section of the wall we can see there. It's all, yeah, the perspective in, in here is, is excellent again. And this is the thing, you, you look at the sort of, um, the height here, to so the height here. It's about right, isn't it? It's just about the right, um, it diminishes in just about the right amount, as, as does this one. Top of the wall is near a wall here, going down to somewhere beyond our, at the edge of our painting, and it diminishes just about right. Peters out a little bit here, there's the height of it there. Very good, Sarah. Very good. Um, a little bit heavy again, you know, around here. And I'm going to say the same to you as I said uh, to, to, uh, about Ron's and, and one or two of the others. I, th I think the idea of the dry brush dark paint is absolutely spot on, but it needs to be a little more scant around here. Whereas we, we can get away with the heavy dry, dry dark paint down here because it's close to us. Um, but when, when we deliver it to areas a little bit further into the scene, it needs to be a little more scant, a little, as I say, a little more, a little more miss than hit. Um, you know, the, it, we, I don't think we have to worry about, because it's the focal point, this area here, because it's the focal point, I think we've sort of, we thought, well, we'll put, um, we'll put a lot of heavy, dry, dark paint in here which yes you do have to do but you just be aware that you can overdo it um you can overdo it it it, it, it it's it's adequate by the fact you know there's there's enough um interest in this area just by the fact that it's the only vertical thing in, in there so you can afford to ease off the other methods we use in order to show a, um show off a focal point but overall, that, that's a really good painting. Last but not least, Sherry. Okay, very different again. Now, this this is quite a contemporary effect. Um, I do like this. And again, you know, I know, I know it was something that I brought to our attention um, was, was the importance of, grab a different color a second, um, the importance of how we make um, the signs, the, the, the movement, the lines in our paintings, and um, I think you've done that beautifully well. And, and again from here, and this is the thing about um, balance in paintings, you know, whereas um, I was bringing to the attention on one or two of the paintings we've looked at already about being hard edged in too many places, if <laughs> If you're making a statement, a deliberate statement, um, that you, that you're using hard edges, um, which which is what I get from yours here, Sherry, is it's it's almost as though you've said, you know, I'm using hard edges, and uh, and um, like it or not, that that's what I'm doing, and it, it's 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 having the commitment, the um, the word I'm looking for here is conviction. If you've decided, if you've committed to a particular effect um, and you've sort of said, well, you know, this is where I am with my work at the moment. I am using hard edges. Um, you, you, by showing conviction in that particular element, um, I, you know, I think things can develop out of that. Um, but we need to sort of sometimes self-assess and say, is this really what we want in our work? Um, because I'm just looking, sorry, I'm also just looking at, I think this wall is a little bit small. It should be at least this high. 
and this deep here, this this front wall. That 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 would bring this whole scene. That would add commitment uh, and sort of a conviction, if you like, to this whole scene. It's so bold, it's so hard of edge. There's not a lot of wet in wet. It's very impressionistic, almost, dare I say, sort of Van Gogh. Um, but we still need to perhaps address a couple of issues. Uh, scale is one of them. This this near wall here is, is way too small. Um, but as I often find with your work, Sherry, um, you know, you, my initial thoughts are, oh, not sure about that bit, not sure about this bit. And then as you look at it, the more you look at it, the more appeal it seems to have. And the last thing I want to do as a tutor is to sort of redirect you away from something that's developing for you. Um, and I think something is developing in your work. Drawn all over this, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, that's what's happening in your work at the moment, Sherry, is, is really interesting. I think it's going somewhere. Um, but do bear in mind, at least consider some of those things I've mentioned, you know. You, you could balance out. It's all about balance. You could balance out this a little more with perhaps a little bit more softness. It's just my, my only, out of it all, my only real concern is, is as I say, this... This this funny this sort of little wall down here, it's sort of not in the same scale as everything else in 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 the scene. Um, but it's very pleasing to the eye this painting. Yeah, great. Okay, well, well done everybody. Um, see you at the next critique.